We've already tackled the first six seasons of Supernatural, but this time we're taking it all the way to season 14, and I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that this timeline might be even more insane than the first half. So, it's time to save people and hunt things. Season 6, 2010 to 2011. It's good we're starting back up at Season 6 because this is where the timeline starts to get a little weird. Well, weirder than it already was. The showrunners decided to use soap opera time so that Sam and Dean could spend a year apart without them actually having to spend a year apart. So while Season 6 should have started in spring or summer of 2011, instead it's dated to 2010. So what happens in that missing year? Well, Dean starts his new life with Lisa and Ben. Castiel pulls Sam out of hell, but his soul is left behind. Soulless Sam wanders around topside, but he doesn't tell Dean because he wants him to live a normal life. Castiel starts the Angel Civil War against Raphael, who wants things to go back to how they were. Cass needs allies and makes a deal with Crowley, who's the new ruler of hell, to find a way to use the souls in purgatory. In the supernatural verse, souls are like atomic bombs, and everyone spends the season stockpiling them. Crowley resurrects Samuel Campbell, Sam and Dean's maternal grandfather, and other Campbell hunters to help him find purgatory. Soulless Sam joins the Campbells. Around summer of 2010, Sam shows up and saves Dean from a djinn trying to take revenge. Sam doesn't tell Dean about his missing soul, though. But good news! Dean gets another baby. This time it's a shapeshifter baby, and the Winchesters leave it in the capable hands of Christian and Arlene Campbell, who raise it as their own. Samuel tells them about Alphas, the patient zero of monsters created by Eve that in turn created all other monsters. Dean's glad that Sam is back and all, but he's suspicious of Sam and Samuel. Later they call down Castiel while trying to solve the case. He tells them about the missing weapons of heaven, supernatural weapons created created by God and the angels. After Castiel fights another angel, he also tells the boys about the civil war going on in heaven. You know, seems like a thing that maybe he should have mentioned. In the fall, Bobby gets his soul back from Crowley after the boys fly to Scotland and threaten to burn the demon's bones. In October, Dean briefly becomes a vampire, and this is a pretty big deal because Sam could have prevented Dean from getting turned, but instead appears kinda aroused by it. On the bright side, the boys uncover a cure for vampirism, and they meet the vampire Alpha. Lisa, though, breaks it off with Dean, which seems fair when your partner is always dying and or turning into a vampire. I don't know. I don't know if a vampire would, would be a deal breaker for me. Dean has plenty to distract him from the breakup, though. He finally discovers what's going on with Sam's soul, in that it's missing. Samuel is capturing the Alphas and bringing them to Crowley so that he can find the entrance to hell. Crowley says that he can get Sam's soul back if they help him catch alphas. Later in the fall, it's revealed that while fairies and Robert Picardo do exist in the supernatural universe, aliens don't. Really, supernatural? You're gonna give me Osiris and dragons, but not aliens? Next, you're gonna tell me that there's no Bigfoot. Uh, what? He doesn't? Well, okay, what? A, at least that means the Winchesters don't have to kill him. The brothers team up with Meg to capture Crowley, and Castiel succeeds in killing him by burning his bones. Dean makes a deal with Death, trading his ring to get Sam's soul out of the cage. He's also nice enough to put a wall in Sam's mind to keep his memories of the cage from driving him insane. At the end of 2010, Sam wakes up without any memories of the year that wasn't, or the past few months, but he does have a soul now. Yay! Just in time for a group of dragons to perform a ritual and open the door to purgatory, releasing the mother of all monsters, Eve. Okay, sure. <laughs> In early 2011, the gang discovers that they need phoenix ashes to kill Eve. Problem is, phoenixes are extinct. No sweat, they can just time travel. We talked about this in the last video. So Cass zaps them back to March 4th, 1861, when Samuel Colt killed the phoenix with his magic gun, R.I.P. Fox. Sam, Dean, and Bobby encounter one of Eve's new monsters, which Dean dubs Jefferson Starship. Dean kills Eve with the phoenix ash, but before she dies, she reveals that Crowley is still alive. Sam and Bobby are suspicious of Cass, but Dean defends him. In the summer, after after tricking still alive Crowley, Castiel completes the ritual to absorb all of the souls from Purgatory, and they don't exactly go down easy. Cass is driven wild by the power of all of the souls. Crowley escapes, but not before Cass kills his rival Raphael. Dean tries to convince Cass to give up the souls, but instead of doing that, Cass declares himself their new god. Season 7, 2011 to 2012. Season 7 opens in June 2011. Sam begins to have hallucinations of Lucifer. Death tells Team Free Will about the Leviathans, those super powerful monsters that God made all those millennia ago. And good news, they're now uh, inside of Cassiel. The Leviathans escape Cass's body and one possesses him. Leviathan Cass releases all of the monsters into the local water supply because apparently we need to be even more concerned about clean water. The only thing left of Cass is his trench coat. It's a good 
trench coat. Unfortunately for the boys, the Leviathans turned out to be impossible to kill. Also, they burn Bobby's house down. Also, things get worse for Bobby. This is a bad season for him. Sam marries supernatural superfan Becky after a whirlwind courtship. Maybe too much of a whirlwind. Dean teams up with a hunter named Garth to get to the bottom of it. The marriage is annulled and Garth's just happy to have made a new friend. In the fall, two Leviathans posing as Sam and Dean go on a crime spree at the orders of their boss, Dick Roman. Crowley tries to make a deal with Dick, but the Leviathans hate demons just as much as humans. In January of 2012, Bobby discovers Leviathans are allergic to borax. The gang also uncovers the Leviathans' plot to make humans more docile by poisoning the food at Biggerson's, a fast food chain. They get away, but not before Dick Roman shoots Bobby in the head. He later dies from his injury. Good night, sweet idiot. I, I wasn't lying when I said things got worse for Bobby. In the spring, the boys find out that a miracle worker called Emmanuel is actually Castiel. Meg, who's also on the outs with Crowley, agrees to keep an eye on him in a mental hospital. In April, Dick has one of his employees, Charlie Bradbury, try to hack Frank's hard drive. Charlie learns about the Leviathans and uses her powers for good. She helps Sam and Dean. She discovers that Dick has found the Leviathan tablet, part of the Word of God, and it's flying back to the U.S. on a plane borrowed from Donald Trump. Make of that what you will. Team Free Will, though, intercepts the tablet. In May, Kevin Tran, honor student and prophet of the Lord, begins to hear angels. He steals the Leviathan tablet at their bidding. He's then kidnapped by Edgar and forced to read the tablet for the Leviathans. Later in May, the gang attacks Dick at his evil corporation, Sucre Corp. Sam manages to free Kevin, and in return, Kevin tells them that they have to destroy all of the tainted food. Dean and Cass stab Dick with a special weapon. In the resulting explosion, Dean and Cass are pulled into purgatory. Also, Crowley manages to pop in in time to kick kidnap Kevin before Sam can stop him, because Kevin is the Princess Peach of this series. Season 8, 2012 to 2013. Season 8 brings us another missing year. It passes while Dean is in purgatory and Sam is living a Nicholas Sparks novel. So if you wanted to have this timeline make sense, you'd add two years onto the dates now. But this is supernatural. Logic is for squares. In fall of 2012, Dean returns from purgatory without Castiel, but with his new boyfriend, I mean totally platonic best buddy, a vampire named Benny. Dean finds Sam and learns he's given up hunting to have a dog. Dean then finds a year-old message from Kevin Tran on an old cell phone. It leads them to Kevin's hiding place in a church. And hey, he's managed to steal the demon tablet from Crowley while he was escaping. The tablet tells them how to close the gates of hell forever, and Kevin is kind enough to translate it for them. In December, Kevin is kidnapped by Crowley again, along with all of the other existing prophets, because this kid just can't catch a break. In better news, Castiel is back, but he doesn't remember how he got out of purgatory. The demon tablet breaks in half when the gang rescues Kevin. Kevin. Kevin gets one half and Garth hides the other. An angel named Naomi, which is a very angely name if you ask me, visits Castiel. She tells him that the angels rescued him from purgatory so that he could spy on Sam and Dean. In January of 2013, Henry Winchester, the boy's grandfather, pays them a visit all the way from 1958. You'll remember that from the last Supernatural video we did. He tells them about the Men of Letters, a secret society that protects supernatural and occult knowledge. They help him defend the Men of Letters secrets from Abaddon, who followed Henry through time. They also adopted the Men of Letters bunker as their new headquarters. In February, Kevin discovers that the gates of hell can be closed for good by completing three trials. Meanwhile, Naomi tries to get Castiel to kill Dean, but he finally breaks her control and steals the Angel Tablet, an ancient scripture that tells humanity about the angels. Castiel disappears with it. To complete the second trial to close the gates of hell, Sam goes to purgatory to take Bobby's soul to heaven. He completes the trial with the help of Dean's vampire pal, Benny. Meanwhile, never a dull moment for Kevin, he starts seeing hallucinations of Crowley, and they cause him to freak out and run off with the demon tablet. Later, Crowley tricks Kevin into translating both halves of the demon tablet. At this point, Kevin should really just stop translating shit. In May, Crowley captures Castiel. Crowley reveals that he's been working with Naomi to get the angel tablet back. Sam and Dean find Metatron, the scribe of God, who agrees to help them get both tablets back. He tracks down Kevin and saves him just as he's being strangled by Crowley. Sam then tries to complete the final trial, but he's too weak. Metatron tricks Castiel into completing the angel trials under the assumption that they'll lock all of the angels in heaven, but instead ends up banishing all of them to Earth. All of the angels fall, Cass's grace is stolen by Metatron, and Sam is hospitalized as a result of the trials. Season 9, 2013 to 2014. 
Season 9 opens with Sam in the ER. Dean allows an angel, who says his name is Ezekiel, to possess Sam in order to heal him from the trials. But since this is supernatural, it has to be a secret, and no one but Dean can know. Also, there's yet another civil war going on between the now fallen angels. They spend a lot of this season killing each other off. By late May, Abaddon is trying to take over hell from Crowley. Fully human Castiel is having a hard time. The brothers offer to put him up at the bunker, but Ezekiel is afraid of being found out and makes Dean kick Cass to the curb. In June, we learn that the Wicked Witch is real, and so is Oz, which is a fictional world created by Al Frank Baum, but aliens still don't exist. Yeah, I'm still not over that. Anyway, Charlie lives in Oz now because Felicia Day has better things to do, I hope. Sometime in the summer, the brothers discover Castiel working at a gas station. Then in the fall, the brothers finally learn that their buddy Ezekiel is actually Gadriel, the angel who let Lucifer into the Garden of Eden. Gadriel teams up with Metatron, kills Kevin, and takes off in the Impala. By now, I'm shocked that the brothers haven't developed worse trust issues considering everyone is either a secret angel, secretly God, or possessed by a demon, but I guess that's just par for the course for them at this point. Castile gets his grace back after killing some fanatic fallen angels because I guess that's how grace works? But that leaves Dean and Cass to team up with Crowley to track down Gadriel, who's still possessing Sam. Sam, possessed by Crowley, is able to force Gadriel to return to his original vessel, but in return, he wants them to kill Abaddon. In December, Crowley sends the boys after the first blade, since that's the only thing that can kill Abaddon, a knight of hell. They find Cain on the way. Cain agrees to give them the first blade, but it can only be wielded by the one who bears the mark of Cain. Dean is worthy of the mark, but Cain warns him about the great toll it takes on its bearer. Dean's seen a lot at this point, so he still agrees to bear the mark, so he can wield the first blade. By spring 2014, Abaddon is collecting souls to build an army, so now they need to kill her even more. Sam and Dean capture Gadriel, but Metatron turns the tables on them and captures Castiel. You get captured, and you get captured, and everybody gets captured! By June, Castiel is still Metatron's prisoner, but he's making good use of his time by trying to convince Gadriel that Metatron is bad news, and there's room on Team Free Will for another member. Metatron tries to end the Civil War by uniting all of the angels under him, but Castiel's there to lead the dissenting angels. Angels start attacking humanity, and it looks like they're following Cass's orders, but it turns out that Metatron is the one who's pulling the strings. Finally, Gadriel joins Team Free Will to defeat Metatron. Dean kills Abaddon, Castile captures Metatron, but they're not getting off that easy. Metatron kills Dean, who must be pretty used to dying by now, but because of the mark of Cain, he becomes a demon. Season 10, 2014 to 2015. Season 10 kicks off with Dean being resurrected by the mark of Cain, which, at this point, look, if you're still here, you get it. It's supernatural. Death just does not stick. Anyway, because he's a demon, he's working with Crowley, and Sam is searching for him because the rule is you can't go more than two seasons without separating the Winchester brothers. Meanwhile, Cass is looking for missing angels, and Metatron is in heaven in prison. But how can heaven even have a present. Actually, never mind, I shouldn't even be asking these questions. In August, Dean humiliates Crowley, so the demon gives Sam Dean's location as payback. In return, Sam gives Crowley the first blade. Soon after, Sam and Cass cure Dean of demonitis with purified blood. Then, one of the most important events in the Supernatural timeline occurs. Supernatural, the musical, premieres. Rowena, the powerful natural witch, and Crowley's mom resurfaces in season 10, ready to f*** shit up. Crowley's not too happy to see his absentee mom again and throws her in a dungeon in hell. There she begins plotting against her son. She spends the rest of the season manipulating him and proving that Crowley wasn't missing much when she disappeared from his life for 300 years. Sometime later, Cass feels bad about Jimmy Novak's daughter Claire for the first time in five years, so they go find her. Meanwhile, Dean's mark is still acting up. Like, really acting up. And Dean goes on a murderous rampage as a result. Cass tries to make things right with Claire while the boys try to get Metatron to tell them how to get rid of the damned mark. Oh, and Charlie comes back from Oz World. Sam and Cass contact Ghost Bobby because we just haven't had enough Bobby in our lives. They ask for help to spring Metatron out of prison in hopes that he'll give them more info about the mark. Charlie finds the Book of the Damned in a monastery. It contains dark magic that she believes can help Dean get rid of the mark. The book originally belonged to the Stein family a bunch of evil magic Frankensteins, and they're none too pleased that Charlie has it now. Around May 2015, the Steins are mad about the book being stolen, so they kill Charlie in retribution. Dean goes on
on a good old fashioned killing spree like the mascot of toxic masculinity he is. He wipes out the Steins and look, listen guys, I know we love Dean, but can we all agree that he just needs, he needs some help? I mean, he decides that the only way to get rid of his mark is to kill death, which seems rude considering how many solids death has done them over the years. Dean then stabs death with his own scythe and opens a portal to the darkness. No, sadly, not the band. They have songs other than I believe in a thing called love and they're all excellent. Listen to all of them. Season 11, 2015 to 2016. The Darkness, who is named Amara, which you'll remember from our first video, is on the loose and Dean has the hots for her. The feeling is mutual and she spends the whole season talking about their connection, except now she's a baby and that is awkward. Crowley takes the baby Amara and feeds her souls and the brothers do not like this. Elsewhere, Crowley's mom and powerful witch Rowena is trying to start a mega coven, which is a great name for a metal band. So anyway, Sam and Dean go on a hunt with Baby in an episode that has no right being as good as it is. Cass starts tracking down Metatron to ask for help with Amara. Meanwhile, Sam, Crowley, and Rowena travel to hell to ask Lucifer for help. I mean, any port in a storm, right? This obviously doesn't go well, and Dean has to save his brother from hell. Again, Lucifer possesses Castiel, creating Luciel? Castifer? I don't know. I'm gonna go with Castifer. Uh, Castifer sends Dean back in time to a World War I submarine to get the Hand of God, a weapon that may be powerful enough enough to kill Amara. In March 2017, the brothers team up with two married hunters, and this episode is important because the hunters are gay, one is Latino, and neither of them die, and that's just revolutionary. Shortly later, Chuck tells Metatron that he's God in a twist that I swear they just borrowed from every fan theory website since 2008. I'm still reeling from the fact that they got B-list country singer Brantford Emberton to play God. Just kidding, I just made that person up, but if you look at God, you might think for a second that I was actually telling the truth. And that's kind of the point. Anyway, the gang all gets together to try to get Castifer back. Amara burns Lucifer out of Castiel's body and everyone thinks he's dead. Spoilers, he's not. This is supernatural. <laughs> she injures Chuck and the world is ending. And somewhere in the UK, a British lady is mad about this. Team Free Will have a new plan to take out Amara. They're gonna build a bomb out of souls. Aw yeah. Dean and Amara have a heart to heart and it turns out that Amara just wants to be close to her brother Chuck and that's why she tried to kill him, you know classic family drama. Chuck and Amara decide to have some sibling bonding time. They fix the world and then just disappear, but not before granting Dean his greatest wish, which is that his mother wasn't dead, apparently. Back at the bunker, the British lady Tony shows up and kidnaps Sam just before undead Mary Winchester shows up. Season 12, 2016 to 2017. Around summer 2016, Dean, his mom, and Cass try to rescue Sam, who's being tortured for his past sins by the series' silliest villains, mean British people who are annoyed that the Winchesters keep almost ending the world. Not that I don't understand. Lucifer is also not actually dead. He's been inside a rock star who is surprisingly tragic. It's the one and only Rick Springfield, AKA Vince Vincente. What am I reading? Somebody please save me from this descent into madness. Uh, Cass and Crowley team up to find him. In December, after his rock star vessel doesn't pan out, Lucifer possesses the president, which feels very close to home. Is this political commentary and there are still no aliens? President Lucifer wastes no time in abusing the powers of his office and tries to pressure Ukraine into investigating Joe Biden. I mean, he gets his secretary pregnant. Ah, oh, geez, what a slip of the tongue. Sam and Dean break into the White House, are detained in solitary confinement for about two months and escape with the help of the British men of letters. They really should have given them a better name. In March of 2017, Mary teams up with Mr. Ketch, who is a character genetically engineered to be impossible to care about. He convinces Mary to start killing hunters. They do it. Team Free Will tries to warn the secretary, Kelly Klein, about her baby being evil. I mean, is this really a surprise? It is the president. I mean, Lucifer's baby. Kelly goes on the run, but Cass decides to help her hide from Lucifer. A group of hunters storm the British home base and kick ass American style. Mary feels bad about doing all of the murders, but her son forgives her and they hug. So I guess it's all okay with all of the murders. On May 18th, 2017, Kelly gives birth, which creates a tear in space time that leads to an alternate dimension with an apocalypse world version version of Bobby. Oh, and it also kills her. Crowley and Cass die after trying to kill Lucifer, but what's another measly death at this point? Mary and Lucifer are pulled into the alternate universe. After the fight, Sam finds the Satan baby Jack is now a teenager. Yep, definitely tracks for a Satan baby. Season 13, 2017 to 2018. Y'all, we're almost caught up. 
they're gonna let me out of my cage soon. One day after his birth, Jack says father a lot and has black canary powers. The boys decide to take Jack in. Sam's ready to accept the spawn of Satan, but Dean's suspicious. In the alternate universe, Lucifer keeps Mary alive as a hostage to trade for Jack, but then they run into Apocalypse Michael, who is bad news. In May of 2017, Castiel is in the big empty where angels go when they die. He's supposed to be in an eternal sleep, but he somehow wakes up, possibly because Jack just misses him too much. He learns about the empty from the cosmic black goo that reigns there. The goo gets sick of all the chaos Castiel is creating, so it boots Cass out of the empty and back into reality. Billy the Reaper is the new death, and Castiel is back. Huzzah! In June, Jack runs away, believing he's a monster. The boys hunt him down with Asmodeus hot on their trail. Asmodeus is the new king of hell and definitely not cosplaying Colonel Sanders. Lucifer escapes Apocalypse World and returns back to our world with the help of that rascal Kevin. The Apocalypse World version of Kevin. Still weak from all they've been through, Lucifer and Castiel are captured by Asmodeus and his henchman, Mr. Ketch, who is still alive because Chuck, aka God, has abandoned us. Later that summer, the crew catches up with Jack. With the help of a dreamwalker, Jack is able to find find Mary, but learns that Sam and Dean are trapped in a very bad place. The wayward sisters, Claire, Alex, Jody, and Donna rescue them. Rowena is still alive after dying at Lucifer's hands a couple of times. Turns out her resurrection charm sure came in handy. Speaking of the devil, Cass and Lucifer team up to escape Asmodeus and then immediately turn on each other. In the fall, the boys look for the demon tablet. Hey, remember that? They hope that the tablet can open the portal to the apocalypse world. The brothers strike a deal with Ketch to fight off Lucifer and Apocalypse Michael. Ketch is now acting as a sort of double agent for the Winchester. Asmodeus reveals that he's drawing power from Gabriel, who is also not dead, but we like him, so it's cool. Over in the Apocalypse world, that world Zachariah is going after Jack and Mary, believing that Jack can open a rift between the worlds. But Apocalypse Bobby arrives in a blaze of glory and helps Jack and Mary escape. In the winter, another iconic supernatural episode takes place. Or should I say, Scooby Natural episode takes place. Cut to Dean's Scooby-Doo impression. Finally, in the spring of 2018, Dean and Ketch make it to Apocalypse world. They try Try to rescue Apocalypse World Charlie, who tells them about what Jack and Mary have been up to since getting sucked into the world. Meanwhile, Cass and Sam find Gabriel. They free him, but as soon as he's free, he takes off again. But it's not too long before he's knocking on their door again, seeking help after being injured in a fight. In the summer, Rowena and Gabriel work together to capture Lucifer. The Winchester brothers travel through the Apocalypse World with Cass and Gabriel. The boys rush to find Mary and Jack, but Sam is killed by monsters before they can find him. His death doesn't stick long, though, because Lucifer brings him back, and then Sam takes Lucifer to meet Jack. I love how at this point we're just like, and then Sam died, but whatever, he didn't actually die, he's fine. In the fall, the gang makes an attempt to rescue the people of Apocalypse World. They open a rift that allows the Apocalypse folks to enter our world, but Michael comes through the rift with them. Apocalypse Michael kills Gabriel and defeats Lucifer, but both Michael and Lucifer are locked in Apocalypse World. Lucifer and Michael team up, and with their powers combined, are able to escape. They attack the bunker, Lucifer takes Jack's grace, leaving him human. Dean says yes to Michael in order to defeat Lucifer. Clearly, Michael's packed with Lucifer is short-lived. Dean finally succeeds in killing Lucifer, but then Michael takes off with Dean's body. Season 14. 2018 to 2019. In October of 2018, Dean, still possessed by Michael, has been missing for weeks. Turns out he's busy flying around the world being a dick. Apocalypse Bobby is back in our world and uses his gruff charm to try to train human Jack. Sam has taken charge of the new Hunter Network and he and Cass are on the hunt for Dean. Now tired of flying around and being a dick, Michael slash Dean begins experimenting on monsters by enhancing them with his grace. Through all of this though, Dean does manage to escape Michael's grasp. Around November of 2018, Jack collapses. His human and angel sides are out of balance. They go to Rowena for help, but Jack dies before they can treat his condition. It turns out that the Empty is pursuing Jack's soul. Castile makes a deal with the Empty to save Jack and successfully brings him back. Well, for the most part. To get Jack back, they enlist the help of a woman who knows angel magic that burns off some of her human soul with each use. She teaches Jack to use the same magic and tells him it's all good, don't worry about the whole soul burning thing. By December, Michael has started making a roided up demon army. Dean, Sam, Jack, and Cass go to take down Michael, but in the ensuing fight, Michael repossesses Dean. The gang captures Michael slash Dean and manages to trap Michael in Dean's mind. Without Michael at the helm, the army disperses. In early 2019, the boys accidentally summon John Winchester from 2003. This creates another alternate timeline where Sam is internet famous and Dean is a serial killer. 
Yeah, all right. Michael manages to break out of Dean's mind prison and regain control of his body. Jack ends up burning up a lot of his soul in order to save Dean, Sam, and the rest of the crew from Michael. Jack kills Michael, but he's used up almost all of his soul. Lucifer's former vessel, Nick, is running around killing people in order to resurrect Lucifer and bring him back from the empty. Jack intervenes and kills Nick real good, maybe too good. Kinda seems like Jack's completely soulless, that's how hard he killed that guy. Mary's horrified by what Jack has done, and he accidentally on purpose kills Mary to prevent her from telling the Winchesters what he's done. Jack runs away and confuses himself with visions of a manipulative Lucifer. Sam, Cass, and Dean trap Jack in a prison, but he breaks out and he is pissed. Jack then unleashes mind controls on the whole world, compelling everyone to the truth. God reverses Jack's mind control and gives Sam and Cass a gun that can kill anything, including Jack, but it also kills the person who uses it. Dean can't bring himself to kill Jack, so God is the one who pulls the trigger. Figuratively, he actually just snaps his fingers, effectively killing Jack, cause he's God. At this point, it's clear that God is a manipulative sh** who's been watching all of this chaos for his own amusement. Enraged by this, Sam takes the gun and shoots God, but surprise! Turns out the gun can't exactly kill everything, cause it doesn't kill God. I mean, also presumably because he's God, but Sam still suffers a bullet wound to the shoulder. God is angered by Sam's attack, so he decides to end the world by unleashing a plague of zombies and hell beasts upon it, including some of the earliest monsters of the series, even the ghost hitchhiker lady from season one. So how do you go from locusts to zombies to literally God? I guess that's what 14 seasons of Supernatural does to a guy. Jack wakes up in the empty, Billy and the Shadow are there, and they need to talk. So ends season 14. Oh, are you guys as tired as I am? Because I'm exhausted and I haven't even died once. The Winchester boys must be running on fumes. We've covered an amazing number of monsters, angels, and extra-dimensional entities, but there's more to come in the final season. I've been Jacob with Cinematica, and make sure to subscribe so you can catch our season 15 timeline when it does come out. Until then, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go lie down.